Hello my crafty friends and welcome to another Mixed Media Tuesday. Today I'm sharing a two-page layout on my art journal book and I'm going to play with minimal supplies so anyone can do it, you don't have to go and buy anything. I'm going to show you how to make the background using acrylic paints and I will make my own focal points and color everything with watercolors. So let's start, I'm working on my small art journal by Dilutions. The pages on the Dilutions journal are quite thick and they take any type of medium nicely so I never really use gesso to prep the pages. But depending on your pages, maybe you want to try gesso before you apply acrylic paints. Now any type of acrylic paints that you have at home would work for this technique. I'm going to use two shades of blue, a darker and a lighter one. And if you are wondering, I'm working with paper archie paints. The exact colors are Mermaid and Captain Peacock, but really any type of uh, acrylic paint would work for this technique. Just add a blob of a lighter and a darker uh, blue and just go for it with your brush. I'm going to mix those colors directly on my pages. I'm starting with a darker shade and then I'm going to mix on top the lighter one. These paints do dry quite quickly. And when you try to blend them together directly on your page, you will get lighter and darker areas. That's exactly what we want. We don't want to have a solid color. This is going to give some variation and interest on our background. And I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. I dip every now and then my brush in the water. This is going to help my paint to spread evenly and quicker. But keep in mind that if you have gesso underneath, you are going to save a lot of paint since uh, the paint isn't uh, instantly absorbed by the pages. Also notice that I mainly go up and down. I don't go left or right or diagonally. It's just the style and the look that I love. But you can do whatever makes you happy. For the next step, I'm going to apply some paint over the stencil. You can use any stencil that you have at home, as long as it is quite generic. Patterns like this one can be used on every project. If you don't have a stencil, there are many things in uh, the house that you can grab and work with them for creating patterns. So, for example, you can grab a lace and apply paint over the lace. It's going to give you beautiful results. Now, notice that I'm going for a very subtle pattern there. It is mainly going to be visible when I apply that paint over the darker areas. This is exactly the look that I'm going for. I don't want my background to be super busy. It may be not so visible with all the lighting that I have on my studio right now, but you will be able to see that pattern in the close-up photos at the end. I'm also using the darker shade of blue that I used for the background to add some splashes. And then I'm going to use my heat tool to make sure that everything is completely dry before I move on to the next step. I want to make sure that all those pluses are dry. And you can see here a close-up look of how the background looks up to now. Now I'm going to bring in my gesso. This is thick gesso. If you don't have gesso, you can always use white acrylic paint. And then with the side of your spatula, a gift card or even just a scrap piece of paper, you can create vertical and horizontal lines just to add some texture and interest on the background. And here, just to demonstrate, I'm just using a scrap piece of paper just to show you that you really don't need to have a spatula for that. It uh, really is up to you how big those lines are going to be depending on the piece of scrap paper that you are working with. They can be long or they can be super short. And all I'm doing is creating a crosshatch effect. So I'm now creating the horizontal lines. This technique can be done with any color that you like. I went with white just because I like to introduce highlights on my backgrounds. And of course, since I have all that gesso on my table, I'm going to add some white splashes. And then I will put the book aside for the background to dry and I will work on the focal points. Now at this stage, I would normally work with stamps where I stamp color and cut out my focal point. In this case, since I'm creating everything from scratch, I'm working on watercolor paper and with my pencil I'm going to draw my focal points. So I'm starting with a rainbow. Nothing has to be perfect, especially if it is a little bit crooked, it's going to give a whimsical look on your finished page. 
just try to make it imperfect, you will see that it's going to work at the end. I'm going with six colors for my rainbow. You can have a monochromatic rainbow if you wish. You can use any color that you want for your rainbow. Remember, this is your page and you can do whatever pleases you. I will also draw fluffy clouds as well as flowers to dress up my page. These are really basic designs that anyone can draw. Again, remember, nothing has to be perfect. Just go for it, trust me, they are not difficult designs and you will be super happy at the end. However, if you feel quite insecure with your uh, drawing skills, then you can always print out uh, something from uh, the internet and use it as a template. Once you are happy with all the elements that you draw, you can grab your coloring mediums, color them and then cut them out if you want to. I decided to cut out everything first and then add color. I'm going to work with watercolors and I didn't want to have colors bleed in one another. So in the case of the rainbow, I am going to cut out every one of those bows separately. This is going to give me the opportunity to separate them somehow on the finished page so that I can have a gap in between those colors. It's not something that you have to do, just how I imagined my page. Now, you can always go and color everything with your colored pencils, this way you will not have any bleeding. But in any case, before you start coloring all those elements, just make sure that you erase all those pencil lines that we did while we draw them. So here you see, I thought, oh, I need a heart, I just draw the heart and cut it out. Then you will see that I am going to draw a few flowers as well as uh, some leaves. And you can go with butterflies for your page, the sky is the limit here, you can even uh, draw a balloon to use on your sky. Just be creative and create fun elements to dress up your page. And of course, if you have dyes that cut out hearts, clouds, leaves and flowers, you can by all means use them as well. I just wanted to create something completely from scratch here today, just to show you that it is possible to create art journals, beautiful ones, without buying everything that is out there. I know that I have lots of products and I always introduce new products to my audience just because I do have a channel and I don't want that to be boring. However, keep in mind, you don't have to break the bank. Now let's bring all those elements to life. For that you can use any coloring medium that you have. You can go with acrylics. I'm going with watercolors. These are brushes but they really have watercolor in the barrel. You can go with your colored pencils. Just go for it, add a solid color there on all the bows of your rainbows. And I'm going to show you later on when we stick the rainbow together a little trick to make it look dimensional. Thank you. 
And so now you can see my focal point is uh, pretty much ready. I'm sticking it down. If you follow my videos, you already know that if I have elements that are going through that fold, I like to cut them out and then puzzle them back together. I have found throughout the years that this is the safest way to go since uh, from opening and closing the books again and again through the years, they tend to lift at the center. So anyway, that's what I like to do. I'm going to put back together all the rays on the other side. And the page is already looking so bright, colorful and happy. I'm going to add my extra elements like the leaves and the clouds. So I'm going to let you see how I put everything together and I will catch you back when it is time to add the finishing touches which are going to give dimension on the page and bring everything together. So at this stage everything is down, I did use my scissors to cut out any excess paper and I'm going to do some stamping on the background. This is something that I wasn't planning to do in the beginning but I thought it was looking quite plain. For that I'm using just a text stamp that I had in my stash. <clears throat> I'm working with archival ink here but you can use any ink that you have at home that is slightly darker than the background. And I'm going to bring in my thin black pen and I'm going to draw some sketchy lines around all the cutouts. Around the flowers, around the leaves, the clouds. But for the rainbow I'm only going to draw a line at the bottom of each and every one of those bows. This is a little trick that I'm doing for the rainbow and you will see why in a bit. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to let you know a little bit about my whereabouts this summer. Just like every summer, I take things slower. I don't post as much. However, I promise you my YouTube channel is not going to die. I will make my best to put up at least one video every week. This is actually something that I do every year. It really helps my creativity to stay away from my craft room for a while and enjoy vacations and the sea. I am going to have lots of scheduled videos, however, so I may not answer on any questions immediately the same day, but I will make sure to check out all the comments every day while drinking my morning coffee by the sea. So anyway, I'm using my pen here to create kind of a border. I always like to have a border on my pages. I like how it frames my art. And this time I'm going with a very simple one, just drawing some sketchy lines around the project. And I'm going to draw two lines, which are not going to match completely. So they are going to add something extra on the edges. And now it's time to bring the white gel pen. With this one, we are going to add the highlights everywhere, on the leaves, on the flowers, on the little heart, and for the rainbow, I'm going to add the white line at the top of each one of those bows. So you have a black line at the bottom and a white line at the top. This gives the illusion that it is quite dimensional. When you see the close-up photos, you will understand what I mean. Also notice that I used my black pen to draw some uh, droplets, some raindrops from the cloud, which I did color in with my white gel pen. I'm also adding some um, uh, details around the border. And at this stage I realized that my flowers don't have a center, so I just cut out uh, tiny little circles for the centers. I did color them again with a yellow watercolor. And really when I kind of finish a page, I can go on and on with little details here and there forever. I would say it is my favorite process from the whole art journaling uh, thing. Adding the shadows, the highlights, the little details here and there, that really makes a difference on a project. So again here I'm using my watercolor brushes to go over some uh, shadows on the clouds just to make them more prominent. Just remember, don't be afraid to play with shadows, it really helps those elements to come to life. Now the clouds look even fluffier. And finally, let's add a quote. I always like to go with motivational quotes. 
and lately I am using my label maker to print them out. Of course, you can print them on your uh, printer machine from your computer or you can even just write it down if you like your handwriting. I always like to combine small phrases with a big bold word that uh, really emphasizes the meaning of this page. So in this case, I went with rainbow. And again, remember, if you don't have alphabet ties to cut out the letters, you can use an alphabet stamp if you have one, or even write it down with your own handwriting. I always like to outline the quote with a black marker, as well as add highlights on the big letters. And to finish it off, I just spread it a few gems along the rainbow. So that was the project for today. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired, and that you will try to create a page from scratch, creating your very own focal points. Just like always, down below in the description area, I will have a list of the actual supplies that I used for today. Don't forget to like the video, to leave me a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you all so much for joining me today, and I hope you'll all have a lovely day.